Hello there, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. Yesterday, there was a very interesting um, exchange in the Senate between Fatima Payman and Senator, Fat Senator Fatima Payman and uh, Senator Pauline Hansen. This was around Section uh, 44 of the Australian Constitution. So this section 44 outlines the disqualification um, for individuals seeking to be elected or sitting as a member of the Australian uh, Parliament. So if you're seeking to be elected, to standing um, to become either a House of Representative or Senator, so they are setting... A, um, you know, eligibility criteria that a person must have. So certain, if the person doesn't have those eligibility criteria, the person is disqualified. So one of the key issue here that uh, Pauline Hansen wanted uh, to refer Fatima Payman to the Australian Constitution for review is the fact that Fat uh, Senator Fatima Payman came to Australia as a minor and as a refugee from Afghanistan and because she then because she was Afghanistan is assumed she would have a, a citizenship of Afghanistan and then Australian citizenship so foreign allegiance is a disqualification under this uh, section 44 which is why um, she wouldn't um that's why she wanted they wanted to refer the matter to um the australian constitution to be for review to high court of australia for review so another disqualification is if you had a criminal conviction in south africa that's not a, a disqualification because we know gates and mckenzie had a had a criminal conviction and was in jail that it's not a disqualification, but in Australia it is. Bankruptcy is also a disqualification. If you've ever been dis uh, bankrupt and you, you couldn't stand for any member of parliament in Australia. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of them. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this one that's very important that this one the here that Senator Pauline Hansen wanted to refer. Uh, Senator Fatima Payment to the High Court of Australia to have a look at her dual nationality of Afghanistan. Now, I think in 2017 there was a lot of a lot of senators, including Barnaby Joyce, um, Fiona Nash, they were caught up in this uh, dual national um, cases, citizen cases, and the notable one that was actually um, that was uh, Katie Galaga. Katie Galaga was in 2018 that she was disqualified to um, be in, to be a member of Australian Parliament because of her British citizenship. Because when she was nominating before, so she needed to have taken step to renounce her British citizenship before nominate she was nominated. So. And therefore, the court ruled that uh, because her renunciation process was incomplete at a time of her being nominated to become the member of Australian uh, of Australian Parliament, she was then ineligible to be uh, any to be a member of Australian Parliament. So, so fast forward to Fatima Payment. Fatima Payment for her, it's a little bit um, straightforward. In my understanding, is that because when she was uh, nominated, she did refer when she was going to stand for Labor, she fill out a form and then said she had a. a to a potentially a citizen, another citizenship of Afghanistan, and she she took step to renounce that citizenship because at that time, Afghanistan was not considered a you know a a, a country with a, a authority to actually 
accept re renunciation of, of her citizenship. So therefore, the party, following those judgments of 2018, the party, if the party are satisfied that the person is actually, has taken those step to renounce it before nominated, therefore she is not eligible to stand because the Labour, then Labour Party accepted that she could, there was no other ways of her to renounce her Afghanistan citizenship because Afghanistan was not recognised as a legitimate government at the time of her being nominated to be, be on a ticket for Labour. Okay, so this is the background about this exchange that we're about to listen to. Okay, so now that I've given you section 44 background in Australian and in Australian law, so we're going to listen to this exchange between the two of them and also going to come in and comment about this exchange. Okay, let's listen. And why don't you just look at me when you're saying all these things through the chair? Because it's absolutely outrageous that you're going to come to this place to suspend standing orders when we've got an agenda full of important things that Australians want us to do. And instead of representing your constituents through the chair, Senator Hansen is more caught up in the section 44. You know what? You've worn the burqa, sorry, through the chair. Senator Hansen has worn the burqa in this place. Maybe it's time that she pack her burqa and go to Afghanistan and talk to the Taliban about this. Because so in this uh, packing her burqa to go to Taliban, she's actually referring to this incident. Let's have a look. Thank you, Minister. Senator Hansen. I'm quite happy to remove this because Order. will you Order work to on actually ban the burqa in Australia? Attorney General, Senator Brandis. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Hanson, no, we will not be banning the burqa. Now, Senator Hanson, I am not going to pretend to ignore the stunt that you have tried to pull today by arriving in the chamber dressed in a burqa, when we all know that you, you are not an adherent of the Islamic faith. And I would ca caution you and counsel you, Senator Hanson, with respect, to be very, very careful of the offence you may do to the religious sensibilities of other Australians. We have about half a million Australians in this country of the Islamic faith, and the vast majority of them are law-abiding good Australians. And it, Senator Hanson, it is absolutely consistent with being a good law-abiding Australian and being a strict adherent Muslim. Now, Senator Hanson, for the last four years, I have had responsibility preeminently among the ministers subject to the Prime Minister for national security policy. And I can tell you, Senator Hanson, that it has been the advice of each Director General of Security with whom I have worked, and each Commissioner of the Australian Federal Police with whom I have worked, that, that it is vital for their intelligence and law enforcement work that they work cooperatively with the Muslim community and to ridicule that community, to drive it into a corner, to mock its religious garments is an appalling thing to do. And I would ask you to reflect on what you have done. Order. 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 Because clearly, when the Labor Party put me up as a candidate, they did their homework, and here it is. Here's the advice, Senator Hanson. Do you want to see it for yourself? Because no, you're in absolute denial. All that Senator Hanson does in this place is, is spread hatred, s spread division, because that's what, that, that's what you're made to do here. And it's outrageous. It, is, it 
but it's beyond comprehension. Here, take it. Absolutely just don't understand that we're wasting our time talking about a matter that has no basis. You've had it good for too long, Senator Hanson. Through the chair. Senator Hanson, is this a point of order? Yes, it is, because if she's got the documents, I ask her to table those documents. That's not a point of that's not a point that's not a point of order. Senator Payman, you have the call. I'm I'm pretty I'm I am very honoured that I lived, live rent-free in Senator Hansen's mind, but I think you've got better things to do than worry about Section 44 here when there's nothing to see. I mean, the, the racism and, and comments and quotes that you've made in the past... Senator Hansen. I want to withdraw that racism. Oh. It's not racism. I want to withdraw on. Um, Senator Payman, I'll just rephrase that, please. And... I'd ask you just to withdraw for the benefit of the chamber. Um, I, okay, uh, Deputy President, I'd like to I would like to make a few quotes from Senator Hanson that has previously indicated. No, so, Senator Payman, you have to withdraw for the benefit of the chamber, but then you can you can quote as much as you want. I will withdraw so I can now, proceed. Now, now, now proceed. Thank you. Senator Hansen's quote, I challenge anyone to tell me one thing that I've said that is racist. And here I begin. There's a few. There's so many. We could be here all day. She has said, I believe we're in danger of being swamped by Asians in her first speech. In 1998 policy speech, she said Aboriginality would no longer exist under her party's policies. In another statement, she says, we're bringing in people from South Africa at the moment. There's a huge amount coming into Australia who have disease. They've got AIDS. If that is not racist, what is it? Yeah, very interesting statement from Pauline Hansen. Yeah, Pauline Hansen, that's her name, actually. She is like that. So everything that she said that is true anyway. If you're asking, you thought, if you thought, oh, really, did she really say that? Yeah, she said that many times. She likes to provoke people and know stuff and um, all I can say that um, you know the world has moved on now around managing people with HIV and AIDS HIV and AIDS is now a chronic disease so we might it's managed as chronic disease and the stigma around it has thank goodness seem to be reducing in some countries but in some country, it's actually still going up. And that's a very worry because then it delays people from seeking care, from seeking uh, medication that are really effective in managing HIV. So it doesn't become a disease that can lead to death. So I think science has come really a long way in managing these conditions. But no... Uh, yeah, that's Pauline Hansen for you. So anyway, let's continue to listen. Oh, it's not racist. Oh, somebody bring the dictionary because Senator Hansen does not know the definition of racism. The fact that you would say just weeks ago to Senator Faruqi, piss off back to Pakistan, you're not just vindictive, mean, nasty, you bring disgrace to the human race. Yeah, disgrace to the human race. Strong words from Senator Fatima Payman. Senator Fatima Payman, uh, yeah, it's um, the strong word from her. It's good to see her in action. Actually, since she's became independent, she's actually much more relaxed, much more herself. I think she was um, made to toe the line in the labour of all those old people there. Now she's herself, the, she's the youngest senator in Australia ever elected. So she was 27 when she was elected. So, so I kind of like this version of Fatima, Senator Fatima Payman than the one she had before in labour. And she was just a token in Labour. She was a DEI hire, just like Kamala Harris was a DEI hire for uh, the Democrats when she was uh, vice president. And we didn't hear much about her until 
they started popping her up because they wanted uh, her to <laughs> to stand uh, <laughs> up against uh, Donald Trump because Joe, Joe Biden was obviously having some cognitive decline, elderly decline, and uh, yeah, they started, yeah, and then, you know, she was just not a good a campaigner anyway. But I kind of like this version of Fatima, Senator Fatima Payman. No dignity whatsoever as a senator in this prestigious place where we're supposed to bring unity, where we're supposed to have that freedom of expression, yes, but within boundaries and confinements of respect. I kept on giving you the benefit of the doubt, Senator Hansen, despite your repetitive attempts to be racist to anyone who does not look like you. You are a convicted S Senator racist. Han Senator Hansen, convicted point of order. Convicted racist. So the last comment about um, her being a convicted uh, racist is referring to the High Court of Australia's judgment um, against uh, Senator Pauline Hanson. Um, so let's let me um, play that clip for you, um, so you guys uh, can get the background. I did put out a full video about this, uh, just give you guys some background around the White Australia policy. So if you're a new subscriber, you want to know about a little bit about it, you can go to that video um, at the bottom and then you will then find this video in full. But let's play the clip. But this was never a case about money. The second message is that Senator Faruqi should piss off back to Pakistan. That is a variant of the slogan, go back to where you came from. The expert evidence establishes that that is a racist trope with a long history. It carries with it historical anti-immigrant and nativist beliefs with roots in Australia that are traceable to the white Australia policy. It is a strong form of racism. With breaking news, the federal court has just ruled Senator Pauline Hanson breached the Racial Discrimination Act over a tweet the judge slammed as profoundly insulting. Annalise Bolt is following the story for us. Annalise, talk us through the ruling. Sophie, this all centres on a tweet made by Senator Hanson back in September 2022 where she told fellow Senator Maureen Faruqi to, quote, piss off back to Pakistan. The, a federal court judge has just ruled that that tweet was deeply offensive and insulting and that it was not done reasonably, even remarking that Senator Hanson has a tendency to say things which are racist and Islamophobic. Here is some of that judgment. Her tweet was an angry personal attack on Senator Faruqi with no discernible content or comment the court has found that Senator Hansen's tweet was not reasonable or in good faith or a fair comment. Yes, Senator Hansen. Yes, I do. And I want these comments about calling me racist You're a convicted withdrawn. racist. Senator, Senator Thorpe, please, this is not adding to the debate. Senator Thorpe, this is not adding to the debate. Oh, Accusing no. someone of being a racist is in breach of the standing orders. Senator, pa Senator Payman, could just withdraw that and continue with your remarks. For the benefit of the I, chamber. Uh, for the benefit of this chamber, I will withdraw. But you know what, Senator Hanson? How do you live with yourself, Senator Hanson, with so much violent hatred? How do you live through your days spreading hatred? How do you go to sleep? How do you look your neighbours in the eye knowing that you come to this place and spreading the vile hatred, the vile comments that you make. It's disgraceful. It's disgusting. I have no other words to describe your actions because you come here and I don't know how you're going to justify it to every Australian out there watching because I hope you're watching what Senator Hansen's doing. She's holding up business of the day because she is obsessed with me. Wow. Well... Yes, obsessed with me. You are obsessed with me. Okay, thank you guys for listening. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. And if you like the contact, please uh, consider subscribing. Until next time, see ya.